member of UAW and also a, uh, a minister uh, in a church in South Danbury. South Danbury. I thought it was Danbury, but okay. Gail, come on up. There's never a bad time to pray for the workers of New Hampshire. So, but I want to say just a couple of things first. Um, a number of years ago, I was working as an advocate for laid off workers in the North Country um, when that crazy character bought the mills and then destroyed the paper mills. And I was on those conference calls that Peter was leading and his voice at the other end of the phone and his determination to do right for those workers made a difference. And I thank you, Peter. So Governor, Senator Shaheen, my own Congresswoman, and my dear brother, President McKenzie, and all um, brothers and sisters in the legislature and in the House of Labor. It's an honor to pray with you at this celebration for working people this morning. Blessings on each and every one of you. Last week I had the privilege of being part of the 2013 March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. And the March organizers 50 years ago and again this past week understood that jobs, jobs was first and foremost. Um, in that march. The march was in part a march for jobs that offer dignity and respect and a family sustaining wage. And that's the heart of our dream for a just society. And to the anti-union billionaires and politicians and the media mouthpieces they bankroll, our message is the same as that of Reverend King. The moral arc of the universe ultimately will bend toward justice and we shall overcome. So in the spirit of that determination, let us pray together this morning, each of us according to our own belief system or faith tradition or our own sacred texts. Let us pray for every rank and file worker who shows up for work each day to help knit together the fabric of a decent society. Let us pray that we always remember the words of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr that no work is insignificant. All labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance. Let us pray for the strength to continue our struggle and to build our movement for decent wages and working conditions and safe workplaces and adequate health care and retirement security for all. Let us pray for every organizer in our midst who's driven by the same understanding that Reverend King articulated 52 years ago when he said, less than a century ago, American industry organized misery into sweatshops and proclaimed the right of capital to act without restraints and without conscience. The inspiring answer to this intolerable, dehumanizing existence for workers was economic organization through trade unions. Let us also pray that as we remember our history, we also envision our future. So dialing the clock forward, when we hit January 2014 and some legislator heeds the call from out-of-state forces and yet again files so-called right to work or right to obstruct worker rights legislation, let us pray that our message is louder and clearer than ever, we shall overcome. When a single construction worker is misclassified or cheated out of a fair day's pay, whether due to his or her ethnicity or simply the fact that he or she can be easily exploited, let us pray that our message is louder and clearer than ever, we shall overcome. When public sector workers are vilified and their collective bargaining sacrifices over the years are forgotten, let us pray that our message is louder and clearer than ever, we shall overcome. And when our very collective bargaining rights, which are basic human rights, end up in the crosshairs of those anti-union billionaires and the people they're able to manipulate, let us pray that our voices remain clear and strong, for we shall overcome. I pray today from the depth of my own tradition, where we hear over and over in the biblical text that whatsoever you did or did not do to the least of these, you did also to me. 
In other words, if anyone among us, even those deemed to be the last, the lost, and the least, is harmed by either action or inaction, all of his or her brothers and sisters are equally harmed. Or in even simpler words, an injury to one is an injury to all. Let us pray today that we always remember we are our brothers and sisters keepers. If you are injured or if your union or your rights are under attack, I am injured and under attack as well. Let us pray today that our sense of solidarity and our commitment to the brotherhood and sisterhood of all will always sustain us and will always enable us to overcome, even if our struggle is long. For the labor movement's arc, brothers and sisters, indeed bends towards social and economic justice. Solidarity forever and amen. Thank you.